gently around the perimeter. At this stage, Mother Nature gives it a sharp spike on the end of its beak. Sharp enough to poke a hole through the shell. I'll, I'll be out in a... Uh, little just, by little, the chick works its way around the shell. Hold it, I'll be out in a minute. I'll just take a little longer than I thought. Come on down and meet everybody. Finally, the end of the shell is weakened enough so the chick can push it out. Yeah, right, you push it out. Oh, jeez, this is hard. I hate it when people tape their own deliveries. Aren't there supposed to be pantyhose in there? Wait, I'm coming. I'm not done. Oh. Wait, don't. And after a lot of struggling, it tumbles out, exhausted, but free. Whoa, what did I do last night? For several hours, and then get up on shaky legs and begin to live. For a few weeks, only to be eaten. Old-time poultrymen who've been in the business for many years say they still get a mighty kick out of the miracle of the birth of a baby chick. Hey, guys, it's God! The ratio of pullets and cockerels among chicks is about 50-50. Great! What are those? You may order straight-run chicks. Then again, you may order all pullets. Life is great. It stretches out in front of me like an eternity. Sexing the chicks or separating the males from the females is a highly specialized trade. Yeah, for pervs. Whoa, Milton Merle there. <laughs> it calls for long experience and training. Another man. The experts seldom miss. They can't afford to miss because when you order pullets, you want all pullets, mm -hmm. not a few cockerels mixed in. Hey, why are we screeching? Mm, garage sale. Mm, goodwill. Mm, save for the kids. Mm. It's nice. Uh, you know, it's small. The walls are neutral. Oh, hi, Cindy. I'm so glad I'm in your group. This is going to be fun group. 40-piece chicken nuggets to go. Ooh. Wait a minute, you may be saying. Why am I watching this? Can those chicks just out of the shell be sent without food on trips of a day, two days, even three? You bet. Indeed, they can. Oh. Nature That's thought right. about that, too. The baby chick has within its little body enough unabsorbed yolk to nourish it for 72 hours, three days and nights of travel, with each chick carrying its own lunch. Then they turn on each other. Nevertheless, speed is essential, and it's here that the motor truck plays such a big part in poultry raising. I said speed is essential. In fact, the industry couldn't exist as it does today without motor transportation and the petroleum industry that supplies the quality fuel and lubricants that make this high-speed transportation possible. The unholy alliance between big oil and big chickens. That guy's escaping disguised as a chicken. Chickens! <laughs> But to get back to our baby chicks, I'm full. a cute picture, but it's really not the scientific way to handle chicks. How many are you sitting on? One dead one a little nuts this Easter. <laughs> Their immediate destination after leaving the incubator Broadway. is the Bruder House. Designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. Here a stove is needed to keep the temperature up around 95 degrees for the first week. Almost any kind of stove will do, one of the most common being a kerosene stove. Here I come! Yeah, they mingle, get to know each other a little. The circular guard is to keep the chicks near the heat and prevent floor draft. There are concerts at the gazebo. In a few days, the litter should be covered with paper so the chicks can't eat it. They need plenty of food and lots and lots of water. Individual counseling is provided. From now on, their main job in life is to eat and grow. Eat and grow forever. After the first few days, the paper can be removed. Except for the sports section. The floor should be covered with litter to keep the floor warm and absorb the droppings. Peat moss, fine cut straw, peanut shell, ground corn cobs, or anything that will pack rather closely is good for litter. Cigarette butts, hair, beer cans. Mm. <laughs> After the chicks are two or three weeks old, they can be allowed out of doors if the weather's good. And if they've completed their lessons. At from eight to ten weeks, the pullets being reared for egg production are ready to be transferred from the brooder house to the range. And you know what that means. <laughs> range life is good for chickens, but they're... What? 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 What?
Rain shelters should be fairly small, holding not more than 100 birds. Or migrant workers. The shelter protects them from the sun, gives them a safe place to roost out of the way of rodents. Rodents! Ah! Proper diet and plenty of water are required. Heavens, I'm so fat, I just look at chicken feed and I gain weight. <laughs> Does this taste funny to you? A good grass sod is a must to give the birds an abundant supply of fresh, tender leaves. A selection of ciders and spring water should be kept on hand. Normandy. Rain shelters ought to be spaced about 75 to 100 feet apart so the hens won't go wandering off to gossip with other flocks. You know how chickens are. Yeah, they own everything. Bastards. Oh, it's a fine life, this life on the range. But like all good things, it must come to an end. Time to die. And when they're about six months old, the pullets are ready to move to the laying house to fulfill one of their main functions in life. I can't even, they've got a tiny headache. Remember the old hen house? The one with the rats. It's now a hotel, a pullet hotel. Rooms by the hour. Every room with an outside exposure. Joey the Coxcomb Tortelli. Ricky the Bantam Chavatello. Jimmy Crazy Cock Cuccini. Or if you prefer the bungalow type, we've got that too. 400 feet of it. Altogether, room for thousands of guests. Or chickens typically. But seriously, housing your chickens is important. Whether they're egg or meat producers, they ought to have three or four square feet per bird, depending on the breed. Open your hymnals to number 325. they got to have roosts, too, but they huddle pretty close together, and two or three birds can perch on one foot of space. Everybody, soil and cream is made from chickens! One of the most important advances ever made in poultry raising is the trap nest. The bird can enter the nest easily to lay her egg, but she can't get out again until you let her out. There's no point. This is funny. This simple device permits you to know which birds lay which eggs and to keep a record of each hen's egg production. Which seems excessively anal retentive. The whole secret of profitable chicken raising is to make them produce more than they cost to feed. Oh, you think I can wear these pants out tonight? A hen that lays 210 eggs a year and eats 70 pounds of feed is giving you three eggs for every pound you feed her. She will live. Keep that one. She's worth millions. But if she eats 70 pounds of feed and only lays 70 eggs a year, you better send her to the market or to your dinner table. Or put a warning slip on her desk. And it's the trap nest that lets you keep a record of how well each hen is laying. I'll have an egg tomorrow, man, I swear. Like two that help in developing the chicken of tomorrow. Here, go have a little fun. You can't take it for granted that every hen is earning her keep, even though laying an egg ought to be easy for any chicken. That's what you think, big boy. Well, that was weird. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, anyhow, the trap nest the answer to discovering which are the lazy hens. And this is a good place to point out a few facts about eggs. Stop throwing them at my car. The temperature of an egg when laid is over 100 degrees. Oh, it's true. Every minute it's left in a hot nest in a hot hen house takes away some of its moisture and freshness. So put your mouth under a chicken. <laughs> Gather your eggs often, three or four times a day. Make sure to put them all in one basket. And they'll cool out twice as fast in a wire basket as in a pail. These are headed for the driving range. Clean eggs bring a better price than dirty ones. And when you gather them often, they don't get a chance to get dirty. That's a filthy Fred there collects them. <laughs> the secret of profitable eggs is to cool them quickly and keep them cool. Yeah, I'm cool, baby. And keep them clean. Lick your eggs or have a friend lick them. <laughs> When you've got as many birds to look after as this hatchery, you're pretty receptive to labor-saving devices. Like wagons. And this carrier system is one of the best. It runs the length of the building and is used to carry feed to the different pens. It can be used also for gathering up manure. It saves a lot of back-breaking work. Hey, pal, feed me, then clean up my poops. As your appetizers, I'll be back to get your drink orders, ladies. Another labor saver is the automatic watering trough. It makes certain there's always fresh water for the birds to drink. They're all wearing Rembrandt hats. 
still another handy gadget is this grating machine. Grating! The eggs in, and the machine separates them by weight. Uh, that one's clean, Roy. Right? Eggs are complicated. They should cost like $100 each. The first group will average 24 ounces to the dozen, which Go. is the most profitable size. Go. The next, 23 and a half ounces. The next, 23, and so on. Some eggs don't even exist.